Um, we haven't rehearsed um, who's going to introduce whom, but I, I, if I may take the liberty and just uh, point to your uh, T-shirt here. It says, the, I think, the way of the Nazarene. Yes. And I, I assume that refers to you, your own path in life. Check. Uh, what does that mean? I presume you're referring to Jesus as the Nazarene in question. And you, you, you think you're saying that you follow his path or his way. Is that right? Uh, well, <clears throat> that's what I, I hope. Um, in Acts 24, verse 5, when Paul is arrested, he is accused of being a leader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Ah. And, and the word sect there is also translated as way, so the way of the Nazarene. So sometimes you hear about the Christians talking about the way. And, you know, Jesus taught us the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life to the one true God. And so whilst the earliest followers of Jesus were also called Christians as well, it's, it's clear that they were also called Nazarenes. And so, therefore, I have used this as a title. And as I understand it, interestingly enough, the, the earliest Jews refer to the earliest followers of Yeshua as essentially the Nazarenes. Yes. And there's a similar phrase in the Quran, as I understand, that talks about two groups of Nazarenes, one who are righteous in God's eyes and one who have distorted the truth. If you know the verse, I'll let you, um, I'll let you give it. So no. it's a, I think it, for me, it's a universal title that, that was given by Jews, Christians and Muslims to the earliest followers of Jesus. And, you know, my aim is to try and search the scriptures and be authentic to what Jesus teaches. To be authentic sure. to what Jesus teaches and, and his own life itself. You're following his own life, the way he lived his life as a follower of God. Yes. Yeah, okay. That, that, that's a, thank you for clarifying. And the reason I ask that is because uh, you're a Gentile, I understand, like me. Neither of us are Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm reminded of a, a passage in uh, that most Jewish of the Gospels, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Matthew uh, 18, uh, where a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? So this is the message, what must I do? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Amen. Now, what commandments is Jesus referring to there, you think? The, what, what are these commandments? The genuine law of Moses. Right, so this is the law of God found in the Torah? Yes. The 613 commandments of the law? No. Oh, no, okay. But why is Jesus not referring to those? Because, um, so, Scripture tells us that Jehovah God revealed his instructions, guidance for living to Moses. Mm. And this is commonly known as the law of Moses. But we also know that the, the Jews are very good at being disobedient to that. And to summarize my position on this is um, the priesthood of Israel at certain times in its history became corrupt and distorted and changed God's guidance and instructions for living. So if you read the prophetic books such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, Malachi, etc., there is a common theme. The priesthood had become corrupt. So Jehovah God basically says, I'm going to withdraw my spirit from you. Yeah? You are teaching falsehood. You are not teaching truth. You call evil good. And good evil. Now this is not all the Jews but rather this, these messages from the Jewish prophets are being addressed to the priesthood mm. and so in particular I would argue that the law of sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins was an addition to the law of Moses this was not part of the original law. So it's not there in Leviticus Leviticus the first it, chapters mentions sacrifices in the temple. Absolutely. So you're saying that's all fake? Yes. Gosh. Yeah, and, and the reason I believe that is that there is a consistent theme through the prophets mm -hmm. in Jeremiah 7 and 8, Isaiah, Malachi, okay. Hosea, uh, Amos. And, and, and to summarize essentially what Yoga God says to the Israelites, it says, when did I ever ask you mm -hmm. to do these sacrifices? No, that's true. Now, the point is, is that it's a really bold claim and very few Christians would dare say this, very few Jews would say this. However, um, in Jeremiah 8, 8, there's a infamous... Yeah phrase where Jeremiah talks about the lying pen of the scribes. Now just before that in, 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 in Jeremiah 7 he's talking about the sacrifices that are being brought that God never asked Israelites to bring. Mm -hmm. and, and in that passage in, in 8.8 he's saying you think you know the law? The lying pens of the scribe have made it a lie. Mm -hmm. Now this doesn't mean we throw out the Torah because just like Jeremiah still had the word um, but the issue is we need to be so, and so, so what of that? We've got to be aware and sensitive to these messages in the Hebrew Bible. So mm -hmm. What did Jesus tell us? Jesus taught us that, the, from my perspective, that the religious elite, the religious establishment of Israel... No, no, no I, I must interject. He said to obey the commandments. So he's yeah. not referring to... He's referring to the law of Moses or the law of God found in the Torah as 
obviously. But he also said in the same gospel, yeah. in the Sermon on the Mount, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. Yep. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Exactly. Truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, yep. not one stroke of a letter will pass on the law Amen. until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments, yep commandments of God in Moses yep. and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Whoever does them will be teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Mm. So let me ask you, did Jesus eat pork? No. Why not? Because that, uh, because... Is it not a so it's not a trick yeah, question, no, no, it's no. a very simple question. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I believe yeah. Jesus was obedient to um, those, uh, the direct, the, the animals that Jehovah God declared yeah. could be considered... It's in the Torah, there's a, there's a verse in the Torah, do not eat pork. Yeah. Right, do you eat pork? No. Right, why don't you eat pork? Because Jesus didn't eat pork and I don't believe and I don't believe Jesus abolished that law. I don't believe Paul abolished the law, I don't believe Peter abolished the law. Right. So, so I believe the New Testament it is quite clear that the teachings have been twisted through mistranslation of certain words. Right. Um, in order to and it's probably down to Constantine in about three fifty AD. Uh not sure. Well, uh, Constantine, ignore, anything, anything that, that, that's more yeah, Da Vinci code than, than Constantine, yeah, ignore, I think. Ignore that statement, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, which are, so you obey all the commandments of God in the Torah apart from the sacrificial ones? No, so I just... So what about this circumcision law, for example? Can, Commandment. can I just Sorry. Yep, come on. back just one? Yep, so, yep. I don't know if you'd agree, Paul, because I know that you're a man who loves scripture and you have diligently sought after truth. But one thing I find many Christians... Uh, deliberately ignore mm. is that Jesus explicitly says to the religious leaders of the day you have the law of Moses but you do not obey it well this is uh, Matthew chapter uh, 23 verses 1 to 4 well, there, there is that so yeah. there's that where he criticizes yeah. them but, but explicitly Jesus says to the religious leaders of the day you have the law of Moses but you don't follow it and in Acts chapter 7 Stephen affirms this that, that, that the religious leaders have the law that was given to angels, but they're right. not obedient okay, to okay, it. Let me read the passage. Sorry, the, the this is the passage. Then Jesus said to the crowds and his yeah. disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. In other words, they teach authoritatively uh, from the seat of Moses. Mm -hmm. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they preach. That's Matthew 23. And there's another verse, 23, 23, which makes the same point. Yeah. So it's interesting here that uh, to be a follower of Jesus, you have to be a Torah observant Jew, basically. And I'll add the, where do I get the Jew bit from? Well, Matthew 15, uh, that's what Jesus actually says. Um, he says that he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he actually rebuffs and turns away a Gentile woman, a Canaanite woman, Matthew 15, who approached uh, Jesus and the disciples and only very reluctantly at the end in an exceptional show of grace does he uh, heal uh, this particular woman so I, I would submit that neither you or I are uh, Torah observant Jews you may not eat pork but you don't follow the six the, the, the remainder the remaining commandments of the law uh, but we won't go into circumcision we won't go into all the other commandments that are laid upon Orthodox Jews today I, I imagine you don't follow most of those so, I do observe the, the feasts and the, so the, the, right. the seven, I do observe the right. religious... And you think it's right to execute adulterers and people who apostatize from the Jewish faith, like the law commands? You think that's God's law as well, do you? So, I live... So... In, in terms of, because the, the Torah requires that whole classes of people be executed, including adulterers, homosexuals, uh, people who commit apostasy, in other words, you follow other gods. That's in Deuteronomy, of course. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you, 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 you accept so, that teaching as so well, do you? The, the, the comment I'm just making there is, so you ask, what, what laws do I follow? So I do observe and practice the Jewish religious feasts. Can I, can I just come back at you at a point? So okay. you, you mentioned the 613 laws again, that this yep. is like some sacrosanct and that this represents the genuine law of Moses. The reason why I don't believe it does mm. is because of what Jesus says in John 7:19. So he says, has not Moses given you the law? And none of you carries out the law. Yeah? Mm. And then in, uh, in Acts... Well, we, mentioned, Acts we mentioned Matthew 23, where he actually but, but, encourages his disciples to follow the law no, and obey it. Yeah, no, but so, just, yeah. I'm going to address yeah. Matthew 23 in just a second. Okay. And then in Acts chapter 7, Stephen says, 
um, about the religious leaders, you who receive the law by directions of angels and have not observed it. Right. So, so what can we get from this? We know that the religious that Jesus addresses the religious laws and traditions of the Pharisees and declares that these were not from God, but people referred to these as the law of Moses. No, they didn't, they I'm not trying to say that. No, I don't think it's saying that at all. I'm, I'm, I'm not, that's so, not what so, the passage says so at the all. So the religious, if we went back 2,000 years ago, no, and you and I wanted to enter into relationship with, with, with God Almighty, mm. our route to that is through the priesthood of Israel. They're the ones who teach us what the law of Moses is. What Jesus is telling us is no, that it, what they it's were Moses who teaches us what God's law is, which is was found in the Torah. The Torah tells us what God's law is. I know, but, but we know, according to um, Jehovah, that the prophets have corrupted and distorted and they're misteaching mm -hmm. God's law. Mm -hmm. Now, the prophets aren't going around saying, hey, we're false prophets. Mm -hmm. What they are doing is they are representing mm -hmm. God and they are declaring we are teaching the true law of Moses. Right. Whereas what you read in Matthew 5 mm -hmm. is Jesus came to to put people back onto the right path because the religious leaders were not teaching the genuine law of Moses. Now, and, the, and the right path is to... No, I see, I don't agree with what you've just said. I think you've misrepresented no, the no, passage. No, because it doesn't fit let, let me, where you want to well, go. Well, let me just read the passage again. Yeah, okay. Matthew 23, yeah. Jesus said to the crowds and his yeah. disciples, the Pharisees and the, and the uh, scribes sit on Moses' seat. Yeah. Therefore, do whatever they teach you. Okay. So Jesus is actually enjoining them to, to obey the Pharisees and the, and the, the scribes. Yeah. But don't do as they do, for they do not practice what yes. they preach. So in other words, they, they, are, they are hypocrites. He's not saying don't follow their teaching. He's saying follow it, but they don't follow their own teaching. Now, my question to you was, if we can come back to it, so uh, the, the, the teaching in uh, Deuteronomy and elsewhere, a part of the 613 commandments given by God to Moses, according to the Torah we have today, whether or not it's corrupted, it's certainly in the Torah today. Yeah. Do you agree, therefore, with the commandment of God, according to that Jewish scripture, no. that, say, apostates should be executed? No. Why not? Because Jesus says that his kingdom is not this world. Where does he say that? In uh, John. Yeah. Mm. And he says that his kingdom, and basically that, you know, his kingdom is not to be brought about by a physical sword, by physical violence. Oh, really? yeah. So there's a contradiction there, isn't there? Well, there's a contradiction. There's a massive contradiction in, in because that is, yeah. a, that is a genuine instruction of God Almighty, or whether that one that is added by the priesthood of Israel. No, what I'm saying is, if Matthew enjoins his disciples to yes. follow God's law, now hang on, and God's law in in the Torah of Jesus' time did actually, and he quotes actually uh, in the same passage, Matthew 15. Um, he accuses the Pharisees and the scribes for following the human traditions rather than God's commandments over a various issue. And he actually mentions two commandments they should be following, yep. which they don't follow. One is honor to honour your father and mother. Yeah. What's the second one? Um, to honour your father and mother, and it's about giving a tithe. It's nope. like it's nope. Quick, quick, quick. It's giving, it's giving um, I promise money. you, I promise you, you won't agree with it. Even though Jesus says you should uphold it rather than the man-made traditions that you Pharisees. Have. I promise you, okay. it's on film now. I, 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 I will make a prediction. No, no, I, I will make a prediction now that you're now going to disown Jesus' teaching because you don't like it. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll quote to you the passage. Okay. It's interesting you don't remember it. No one ever remembers it, um, but it's it's there. Here we go. So this is chapter 15. Jesus yeah. says, and why do you break the commandment of God for yeah. the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and mother. You remember that quick enough, don't you? Then he also said, anyone who curses their father or mother must be put to death. Mm -hmm. Do you know where that's a quote from? Uh, it's probably from Leviticus. It's from two no, places. It's in, it's in two places in the, in the Torah. Yeah. Now, I predict, and you haven't answered it, but I'm 100% certain that you're now going to disown that verse, aren't you? You're not, you don't agree with that verse, do you? I'm not going to say I agree or disagree. Well, you're not going to agree with it, I say. You're not going to agree with it. You're I'm not going to agree or disagree with no, but, verse. Okay. So you think uh, it's possible. You see, do you realize how unchristian Jesus' teaching is? No, no. So what, no, what you're by By modern standards. So don't forget, we don't need to worry about modern standards because God is eternal. God's okay. law is good. So, so, what, what, so what we both agree. So, should we, should we, so yeah. Jesus is very clear, and, yeah. you, and you're not now. Jesus is clear that we should put to death a youngster who curses their parents. You won't affirm or deny that. You're equivocal no, so, about so that. I do, so I do recall in regards to this passage, it's not about a youngster. This is the behaviour of an adult, not a child. Okay. Yeah, so under the Jewish law, so let's Well, not... I mean, I'm assuming their parents are alive, given the longevity issues at that time, yeah. that the person would yeah, very but likely but let, be young. Let's not, let's not misconstrue this as, a, as an infant or like 11, 12-year-old. No, I said, I, said a youth. I said a youth. 
Okay, but okay. okay. Yeah. So, so do, do you accept? You are very quick to agree with Jesus about honouring your father and mother, yeah. but we're equal standing in, in Jesus' eyes, according yeah. to Matthew 15, is to put to death anyone who curses their no, father no, or mother. Don't... Anyone. Yeah. So it could be your youth. So if you have okay. a if you have a 16 year old yeah. lad yeah. who curses his parents, should they be should he be put to death? Paul. That's what Jesus commands. Okay, but let's use our, because you are a bright man, and, and, you know, we know that the, the law wasn't just fulfilled willy-nilly, yeah? And so, therefore, there will be a context behind the application. So I'm sure that you would agree that if there was the behaviour of some youths today, and if they did something to their parents that was deserving of the death penalty, that they should be put to death based on their behaviour. We don't know... You're now applying this as any random event no. where a child dishonors his father. What we don't have is the understanding of how this law was fulfilled, what the criteria no. were. You, you, the reason why you I brought this up, in one the, the reason I brought this up is clear. If you could face the camera oh, yeah, again, yeah, of course, of course. you have on your T-shirt, yeah. and uh, I'll, I'll supply the subtext, yeah. I follow the way of the Nazarene. Yeah. Now, you've already admitted or, or, yeah. or, or affirmed that. Yeah. My argument is, yeah. when you drill down into the weeds yeah. of the Gospels themselves, yeah. Jesus taught a lot of stuff yeah. that you, frankly, do not follow or agree so with. I and and, and with I, I, I have I given you an example, but you will not affirm it. So I will now. I will now, because remember what we said before. Interesting. When you already said before that you're going to bring up passages that I've not had a chance to think about. The, the, no, I didn't understand that. I didn't say. Well, no, sorry, I said you were going to bring up passages, and I said okay. I will not. Um, oh, well, have, that, that may be true. I, I don't know what you've read. I have no idea yes, what yes, you've yes, read. So, so. But I can't know I just, that. And, you know, sometimes you need time to think through okay, fair certain enough, fair commandments. Enough. So, yeah. do I have a problem with the death penalty? No. For 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 no, 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 teenagers who curse their parents no, 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 specifically. No, no. But so, but what you're now doing mm. is you're now interpreting the criteria through which that law is enacted. No, the I'm saying is, you're following the way of the Nazarene, sorry, and this sorry, is the Nazarene's Paul, teaching. You have just said that if mm. a youth curses or criticises their parents, and that is curses, the criteria, curses, curses. that is the criteria for fulfilling, for fulfilling that law. The, That's the commandment. The point is, is that no law is ever enacted just on the description of one sentence, yeah? We in, princi in principle, do you agree with that law? In principle? You know, okay, suitable okay, caveats, so, so, okay, a okay, caveat supply. Okay, so, so, for example, the, per the, the person doing this may have been drunk, he may have been insane, he may have not, he may have been... I'm not going all, to all talk of, about we, a, we, we can be lawyers and argue about exceptions. I grant you all of the exceptions. Okay. What I'm trying to say, Jesus rebuked the, the scribes and the Pharisees oh, yeah. for failing to uphold God's law Amen. in two specific yep. instances. Yeah, yeah. The first one, you had no quibbles about yep. whatsoever, yep. and the second one, we've been arguing about ever since. Well, and I'm saying that if you, if you were yet. following Jesus' teaching, you should yeah. simply say, of course Jesus was right, we should put to death anyone, quote, anyone who curses their parents, but, but, because but, but, that is the commandment of God okay, okay. in the Bible. The point is, though, just like you have in your hadiths, yeah, sometimes there are passages in the Quran that your religious leaders or the companions of Muhammad help explain. What Paul is trying to do is to take a single commandment that we don't have in the additional qualifying information as to how it was enacted, what the criteria was for cursing a parent that then resulted in the penalty of that. <coughs> Jesus was absolutely right. One of the gross sins of, of particularly the priesthood of Israel is that they allowed their priests to be wickedly corrupt and they didn't punish those who were genuinely evil. And because of this, evil flourished. Hmm. I am certain that this is what Jesus is addressing here, not petty arguments between a child and their, and their parents. I would no, like it's not petty know. arguments. This is between anyone who curses their parents. It could be a 30-year-old or 40 if their parents are alive. Yeah. So I don't believe this is not, this is not just a narrative. When you say petty, you're diminishing and dismissing the issue. The, the passage doesn't say a child. It, it says anyone who curses the their parents. But what we don't, what we, no, the it doesn't. The passage doesn't but, tell us no. what type of curse warrant or behavior warrants the death penalty so do i have a problem with the death it penalty? does the behavior is cursing it's very specific uh, 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 anyone who curses their parents okay. must be put to death okay. jesus was most particular about this in matthew yeah. he could have ignored it yeah. he could have been loving oh my kingdom is not of this world all these yeah. things which diminish yeah. the the real world yeah. impact yeah. of his teaching he chose according to matthew to emphasize that particular teaching and i i would think also he he would emphasize the teaching on adultery and apostasy and so on which uh incur the death penalty 
Um, but these are commandments today that virtually all Christians uh, have abandoned. Not medieval Christians, today's Christians. We've kind of <laughs> progressed, shall we say. <laughs> and and I suspect that you don't also agree with those commandments either, no, no, although so you profess to follow the way of Nazarene. Yeah, so, I don't, so, as I said, if I understood the criteria, and I would be able to give a more positive answer, but just, just speaking, looking at behaviour of people over time, and the way that some children have been horribly wicked to their parents, then actually I can see how the, 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 as a righteous commandment that Jesus gave there. I'd just like to go to Matthew 23, please. Okay. I'm sure that you are aware, well, some people argue, and I believe that there is a textual variant in Matthew 23. Mm -hmm. Which verse? So there, there's a whole, a whole chapter, which no, verse? So the verse that you've spoken about, where basically, what you're arguing is that- oh, I, I quoted a number of verses, yes, sorry, which one? Sorry. Which so one? It's about, to the, it's about the scribes, Therefore, yeah. so then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on the yep. seat of Moses. Yep. Completely agree. Yep. Now, Therefore, the, do whatever they teach you and follow it. Okay. And this includes the death penalty so, for apostasy, okay. so for adultery, for stop. cursing your parents. It. It's all there in the law. Got it. So the point is, is that in we, are, we both agree that there have been scribal errors. Yep. And wait, 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 Paul. And, and, and both deliberate and mistaken in the New Testament. This verse... No, we don't both agree. Sorry, I, I, you're, you're putting, you're, you're assuming okay. things. So you don't believe... I, I don't that agree with that statement. New, okay, okay. Would you let me voice it in my own words okay. rather than you giving me a formula I have to assent to? Okay. I've, uh, the earliest complete manuscripts of the New Testament we have are in the fourth century. Total Hang on a second. This is 400 years after Jesus' birth. We have no way of, because we don't really know ultimately if the text that we have attributed to Paul or Matthew, Mark, Luke are, have been corrupted or not because we have no isnad. There's no chain of transmission for any of these texts going back to the first century. We do know, however, from the text that we do have that some of those have been interpolated and corrupted because we can see how Christian scribes later have altered manuscripts they've copied to uh, co make corrections when they didn't agree with what Matthew said or where, where Paul said. And we also know that various things have been added to the New Testament, like the Trinity verse in 1 John 5, 7, uh, the resurrection appearances which weren't even there in, the, in Mark's gospel, they've been added. Uh, the story of the woman caught in adultery in John chapter 7, 8 has been added. But we know this because we can compare the earliest manuscript. But behind the earliest complete manuscripts, which is the fourth century, we cannot really go. So I'll refine my statement. So that's what I would say that the earliest manuscripts that we have mm. of the New Testament... That's better. Some of them better. have been corrupted. They've, yes. been, they've been deliberate and And, and are them. you aware of any textual corruption issues yeah. on 23 verses 1 to 4? Are you aware of any textual yes. issues to do with that? Really? Yes. Okay, so, well, what are the issues? So the Hebrew... So there are two. Mm -hmm. There is a textual issue and there is also an interpretational issue based on the clear teachings of Jesus. Mm. It, and I'm going to deal with the, the second one first. And right. you, by the way, you, we're here. ending this conversation in, what, 10 minutes? Because you said you had to go by half past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so before you enter into a long disposition, we're yeah, going to run out of time. So yeah. the first one is clearly Jesus criticizes everything that the Pharisees did. So and, and he says that No, they, he didn't. He said it's me. their teaching Paul, he agreed with. Paul, Paul, he says... You're, you're misrepresenting what I he am, says. I am not. He says their teaching is to be followed, okay. but not their practice. To say he disagreed with everything they said is to misrepresent Matthew. Okay. That's but, not but, what but, Matthew said. Okay. And we need to take the, the message, even in the, in the gospel as it is, Jesus says to the Pharisees, has Moses not given you the law that none of you carries out the law? Stephen says the exact same thing. They that. did not teach it. Does. Please. Read it there. You can't use no, no, in Matthew. I'm looking at Matthew. So looking at this verse now, yeah, okay. Matthew 23, there is a Hebrew version of Matthew, yeah, which basically... Which we don't have. So a guy called Nehemia Gordon, which I think you've interviewed, haven't you? He's done a we don't have a Matthew, a, a Hebrew Sorry. version of. You know, of, but you know Nehemia it's, Gordon. It's written in yeah. Greek. Do you know Nehemia Gordon? Yes. You've interviewed him on your channel. No, I haven't. Okay. Gordon? Moving on. Okay. Whether yeah, so I've anyway, interviewed him. So there are a number of, of Hebrew um, manuscripts of Hebrew Matthew. They are not early. Exactly. They're not early. So I'm being completely honest and transparent. But the issue is the way that that verse there says, "Therefore, do in everything that he tells you." So what Jesus is saying here in Matthew is the scribe and Pharisee sit on the seat of Moses. Yep. Therefore do in everything that he tells you, but do not do as they do. Right. That is... Is that in the Hebrew, the is it? Yes. Right. Okay, let, let me just share with you the overwhelming consensus of historians and biblical scholars. Hang on a second. Is that Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Matthew was written originally in Greek 
And this, this idea that maybe Matthew is using a prior Hebrew version has been tested by the experts and they've not found any reason to think that Matthew was writing in anything other than Greek. Now, you, now that you have said that these so-called Hebrew versions are much later than the earlier ones. And that uh, Matthew has been translated into Icelandic and Sanskrit and for all, for all I know, French. That was a joke. Um, it doesn't prove anything. The earliest manuscripts we have are all in Greek, and it was written, the consensus of the experts is written in Greek. I, I'm not aware of any, uh, I've never had any textual issues about these four verses, where Jesus, just to reiterate, Jesus said this, the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, do whatever they teach you and follow it. That doesn't make any sense, does it, Paul? Well, that, it, make, that, it that, makes that, total that sense. Verse, that verse it makes cannot, complete sense. No, no, Paul, you can say it makes sense to support your it does, narrative, it does. but it completely contradicts everything Jesus goes on to say in the rest of the chapter. How can give me an example. Where, where does it contradict? Where, what does it contradict? So, so give me an example so, of where it contradicts. So Jesus says that these. That, so Paul is saying that Jesus is telling the disciples and the Jews to do everything the Pharisees tell you. That's what Matthew says. Okay. And then in the very next verse, mm -hmm. Jesus says of these same men, they yep. would tie up heavy burdens yep. and put them on people's shoulders. No, you missed out the intermediate verse. He said, but they don't, don't practice what no, no, they no, no, preach. No, no. Therefore, what they practice is tying up are, burdens and all these but, things. But okay, what they say true. is true, no, but true. they don't practice. But Jesus, Jesus says so. No, 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 Paul. Paul, look. Jesus called the disciples the sons of Satan. Jesus said that their father Not was in Satan. Matthew, not in Matthew. Paul, come on, brother. No, no, seriously, in not in Matthew. Okay, but I'm not going to just use Matthew in isolation to the whole... No, but you see, they're independent have. Gospels no, that disagree no, no. about what okay. Jesus teaches. Okay, well, you can, you can if, if, if you cherry-pick all, all over the Bible picking. like that, there is a you're, you are going message, to... Paul, that but there the isn't. Of Israel there is no universal message. ...the message of Jehovah God. And that's why he was going to send a prophet like Moses in mm. whom Jehovah God would place his word. Mm. And he would come to fulfill the law of Moses and teach the people how to fulfill the law of Moses. The Pharisees did not teach the law of Moses. They did not practice the law of Moses. They did not represent the law of Moses in spirit and truth. Okay, and my final word now is, according to Jesus, contrary to what you're saying, that, that uh, disciples are to follow what they teach because they do teach the law of Moses, contrary to what you're claiming, but because they're hypocrites, they tie up burdens and they don't practice what they preach. Jesus, according to Matthew, was a Torah observant Jew. Amen. With respect, you are none of that. No, firstly, I, no, not, firstly, not, you're, you're not Jewish, you're not an Israelite, you're you are not following the 630 uh, commandments of the law. Therefore, not. it's not possible for oh, you to follow the, the, the way of the Nazarene. But uh, let me finish, let yeah, me finish. Sorry. If you want to follow, uh, so, if you want to follow a prophet who was sent for you, yeah. you and I have one thing in common, there's a number of things, but one thing is we're both Gentiles. Yeah. Jesus said in Matthew 15, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. If you want to follow a prophet that came after Jesus, who was sent for us as a mercy to all mankind, you need to follow Muhammad, peace be upon him, because he upheld the true laws that are found in the Torah, abrogated those that are you know, false and no longer to be followed, but he did uphold the substance of the Torah laws about righteous living and justice, avoiding the Quran food, for example, and so on. And the, the Hadood punishments as well, which Christians have abandoned. If you want to follow the way of the Lazarine, my friend, become a Muslim. Well, I want to say thanks, Paul, for this. You've been very respectful. I actually think this went well. Maybe next time we speak, we can talk about whether Jesus was sent to the Gentiles as well uh, or not. But thank well, you for that. All right. Cheers. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, have a good evening. Yep. And I think that's it, folks. Yeah.